Hi, everybody. Welcome to my live. I'm so excited that you could make it here for my Tuesday live where I get to talk about the tutorial that's coming up this Friday, give you an idea of some of the things that I had in mind, some of the things that I ran into, uh, things that I want to add additionally to the tutorial that it was just too much to add to the actual tutorial, tutorial itself and also go over the materials I used for this Friday's tutorial. So that way, if you wanna pick up materials before the tutorial goes live, you can and be ready to go uh, and crochet along with me, which is awesome. Welcome to my Tuesday Live. Thank you so much for making it. I know that it can be a lot making it to an evening live. So I really appreciate your time and you being here. Thank you so much. Now, how these lives are kind of organized or orchestrated. I first start talking about the live, or I first start talking about the tutorial I'm gonna go over this Friday. And I'm going to be focused on talking about the tutorial. I'm gonna be focused about talking about the materials. And after I'm done talking about that, then we get to go into a live Q&A session where you can ask me questions and I will answer them. Well, as I can. If there's a question that kind of has me hung up, I'll let you know and be like, I'll have to answer this with our next live. So <laughs> it's it's a, a great experience for me to be able to answer these questions for you. And it's also a great way for us to connect in a whole other way, especially if you're running into some, some problems with uh, something you're working on. I, let me try to help. I'd love to be there for you. All right. So when it comes to the chat, welcome everybody. And when it comes to the chat, feel free to go crazy with the chat. Just say hi to everybody. All of my members use your emojis. Go crazy with your emojis. Have fun with them. Now is the time to just throw them everywhere. Just use your emojis. Those the limited or not limited edition, but those very exclusive emojis that you only get if you are a member to my channel. So have fun with those. Uh, and if you're curious about becoming a member to my channel, I would love for you to join. Just go over to my YouTube channel itself and hit the join button. Uh, you can really only see the join button on a desktop computer or on an actual computer. If you are watching this from a phone or tablet, there is a loophole that you can go through in order to find that join button. All you have to do is go to your internet browser, type in www.youtube.com, crochet with Tiffany, find me that way. You want the desktop version. And if you go that route, you should be able to see the join button and hit that join button and join my membership. I would love for that. Uh, also check out my crafters gathering. We have a blast over there. <laughs> All right. So let's go ahead and get started. I am super excited about this Friday's tutorial. I am making the lost in time baby beanie. Now what's so great about this? Oh, I have them over here. I didn't bring them over here. One second. Here's the blankets. So I have both of the blankets here. Let me show those off. And while I'm kind of opening these up so I can show them off, let me introduce Hannah. Hannah is my moderator. So if she responds to a comment that you say or a question, um, she is the one that's sending me your questions. So feel free to ask me questions throughout, throughout the live in the chat. Hannah will uh, screenshot them and she will text them straight over to me. So that way I can, uh, when I'm ready for q and I have them already dialed in and I'm not reading, 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 trying to find your question. So, hi, Hannah, everyone say hi, Hannah. <laughs> All right, so last week, it was the Lost in Time baby blanket. Oh my gosh, I love this blanket so much. So here is the little mouse. And then, oh, here is the antique white. Now there's a few kits left available. If you want to get your hands on a kit, do it soon because they're almost gone. But, and you can find my kits at crochetwithtiffany.com. But, oh my gosh, these blankets are just so, so pretty, baby blankets. So I wanted to create a set because that is something that a lot of people have been asking me about is creating sets, right? Things that go with each other. So I did, and I created the matching baby beanie to go with the blanket. Now I'll do this. I'll hold just one up and one up. 
the pattern's the same, so it matches identically. You can tell it goes together, especially even the, the ribbing on the bottom. I'd say this pattern level is also an advanced beginner crochet pattern, just like the blanket, because it is an exact replica. They go together beautifully. And honestly, guys, I'm super excited about the colors that I picked out. These are very special colors. When you pair this beanie with the blanket, the photo props, like the professional photography photographs that you get of baby wearing these are stunning. And any filter that the photographer uses to edit their, their pictures, these colors are just, they just are flattering. Super, super cute in, in all those filters. So you are just going to be so excited to see those pictures. <laughs> and even, even if you're not getting your baby professionally photographed, um, in a regular, a regular with your phone, you know, you take your pic pictures of baby wearing these things. Oh my gosh. It's so, so cute. So complimenting matching set. Now, when it comes to the design of the beanie, I, I went a little different. I tried something very, very different. I'm really curious how you guys feel about how I put this beanie together. And I'm going to leave that, I'm going to leave you on a cliffhanger right there. Like, Tiffany, what are you talking about? What do you mean? You got to wait till Friday to find out. <laughs> so I do it a little different and I'm really curious what you guys think. I show you how to make the pom-pom using just your hand. I'm not using a pom-pom maker to make this particular pom-pom uh, because I want just to make sure you have easy access to everything. You don't have to go and buy a pom-pom maker, though if you have one, use it. Pom-pom makers are awesome. Uh, you can choose if you want to add the decal flower or not. That will also be included in both the pattern and the tutorial. I'm going to show you how to make that cutesy little flower. So if you want to make it, you can. If, if you don't want it, that's totally fine. If you want to hold off and wait, maybe you don't know the gender of the baby and you're like, okay, I want something gender neutral. Go without the flower. Once you find out if it is a, a girl and you're like, I do want to add the flower, then you can always add that on later. It's not a big deal. Cool. And if you want to, you can even add that cutesy little flower onto, onto the blanket too, to like really make it, uh, pair well together. That would be really cute. So if you ordered my kit, I actually slipped the pattern for the Lost in Time baby beanie, uh, baby beanie into the kit along with the blanket. So you have the complete set in that kit already. Oh, thank you so much, Michelle. Mwah. Thank you. I'm glad you like the beanie. <laughs> um, what I found in the process of making making these things is the blanket takes like four and a quarter skeins. It doesn't take the full five skeins. However, it, it won't finish with just four skeins. You have, you have to have that fifth skein. Well, that fifth skein, the remainder left over from making the blanket is just enough yarn to make the large nine to 12 month size beanie and pom-pom and flower. There's enough yarn left over after making your blanket to have enough yarn to make a full, the largest size beanie that I, that I show you how to make. So I was like, oh, this is perfect. You don't need any extra materials here. Have that pattern as an, as an extra thank you for getting the kit. Um, when it comes to anybody else that just wants to buy the pattern, you don't want to buy the kit. You just want to do the beanie, which is totally cool. Uh, it's, I have the exact amount of yarn. So, uh. I have it here. I have, the pattern. I have the pattern with me. So I break down. Let me show you how I do this. I'm going to like do this so you, you're not cheating. No cheating. But I, I break down. I color code the pattern. So if you want to make a zero to three month, it, everything's in green. Uh, if you want to make the three to six month, it's purple. Six to nine month, it's orange. In nine to 12 months, it's blue. Okay. Um, 
that way you can make whatever size beanie you want to make and you don't have to buy a, a pattern for the specific size. It's literally just how, how long you start your foundation and then everything else is the same working the rest of it. So um, when it comes to the remaining yarn left over, the remaining yarn left over from the blanket could make that nine to 12 month beanie and pom pom and flower. It's pretty cool. So the amount of yarn, I just went ahead and found out the amount of yarn for that nine to 12 month. I mean, it doesn't hurt if you have a little extra yarn making, if you want to make the zero to three month, you just have a little extra yarn. It doesn't hurt. So um, making the nine to 12 month size beanie, you need approximately 107 yards of yarn or 98 meters. 0.5 ounces or 15 grams of yarn uh, for the flower. It's two yards of yarn, uh, 1.8 meters, 0.1 ounces or 0.28 grams. Very, very, very little amount for the flower. I don't know why. Oh, I specified just in case, like if you wanted with the flower or without. I mean, you could also technically remove the pom pom and not have the pom pom if you don't want to. Though I think you are you're going to want the pom pom just to make sure you cover the hole at the at the top of the beanie. It, it just cleans everything up. Makes sense. Ah, uh, this is it's such a cute beanie, guys. I'm very very excited. And once what I'm almost more excited about is showing you the process on how I make it because I feel like I'm almost teaching you two different things. I'm teaching you one how to make this beanie but I'm also kind of teaching you a new trick on how to make any, any type of beanie in whatever size you want to make. It's, it's kind of a, like a dual, a dual tutorial there. In fact, after I was finishing up this tutorial, I was like, oh man, now I have a whole idea of how to make another tutorial to show people like how to make whatever type of beanie they want in whatever size they want. <laughs> Uh, the, you know, it's just amazing how you have one project and that one project opens your your creative brain to so many other things that you can do. And then you just you just go crazy. <laughs> you go crazy. And I love it because then I get to share it with you. I get to share every all my crazy thoughts and ideas and project, I you know, projects, inspirations. I get to share them with you. So that's really, really cool. Uh, OK, so the materials. I just shared with you how much yarn approximately. I'm going to put all this in the description section below as well. Just the materials to help you out um, if you want to have everything ready. Again, I'm using Bernat Softy Baby yarn, which is a size three weight yarn, uh, uh, either in Little Mouse or Antique White. The crochet hook is H8, five millimeter. Uh, you'll need a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle or yarn needle to weave in your ends, attach the pom-pom and potentially attach the flower decal as well. Uh, and you, you're gonna want a measuring tape or a ruler. You're gonna want that just to make sure you're staying on track with the size that of uh, the beanie that you are making. So that's gonna be super important. Again, I'm gonna put all that in the description so you're, you're not like, what did she say? What was that? <laughs> All right. So again, if you have any questions in regards to the Lost in Time baby beanie, feel free to ask them now so I can address them, answer any questions and help you out with that. Oh, Michelle, thank you so much. Mwah, I appreciate that. Oh, you're the best. Um, I, I want to make sure that everything you're all ready to go because this Friday is going to be great. I really love the idea of making of making a set. I think this is extra special being able to do this and then sneak peek preview for next Friday. I fin I finish off the set. There's, there's going to be three things total in the set. This, this is, this is going to be the third thing in the set. What do you think? He's very cute. He's very cuddly. What do you think of him? He's coming. He's going to be the last piece to the set. Very excited. He's so cute. Oh, he even sits up. I'm not going to show you any more though. I'll, I'll share him. I'll share more about him. More about him next, next Tuesday. <laughs> but I do. I love the idea of just creating this, this whole like, 
do, doing it all out and having extra pieces together makes uh, it's very giftable, very, very giftable. Um, it just it's more than that beanie because we are more than the blanket. When you get the blanket for that memory piece, that extra special baby blanket, that heirloom piece that I was talking about with my with my tutorial last Friday. Um, that's that's amazing and great. But if you can add a matching beanie, that just ups the whole game, ups the whole level even more. And then if you can add an extra piece like a teddy bear, oh my gosh, like this is going to be one of the most precious, memorable gifts that you could possibly give. And it's it's amazing and it's so special. And I can't wait to show you so that way you can have the ability to create something super special. All right. Again, if you are a member to my channel, oh, I see the emojis already. Jody, hey, how's it going? Michelle, love that you're here. Lisa, oh my, oh my, my girls, you're all here. So if you're part of the crafters gathering, I like recognize you. Um, awesome. So excited to have you guys here. Uh, and now that's all I have for talking about the Boston Time baby beanie. We can now go to the Q&A session. I already have a bunch of screenshots from Hannah of questions that I got. I also reached out to you on Instagram and I asked if anyone had any questions, you could post them there early. So that way I could help you out a little bit earlier. Uh, so if you want to, if you're not a part of my Instagram yet, go check me out on Instagram. I have been trying to be more active. I, that's where I show you behind the scenes, what, what I'm doing behind the scenes. You get to see a lot more behind the camera, what, what's going on with me, what is happening, what I'm working on. And it's very, very exciting. And I also get to ask you questions. So definitely check me out on Instagram. Okay. So I'm going to start with these questions. And then I have a few other things that I know that I was asked in another location. So let's go ahead and go with Faith. Faith. Oh, hope Faith. Hey, Tiffany, in the future, can you do a few half double crochet stitch projects? For example, hats, scarves, blankets, etc. Of course, the half double crochet is one of the most beautiful uh, basic stitches. I love, love, love it so much. Um, now, I have a question for you, Faith. Hope Faith. Um, would you want, oh, PJ! PJ in the house. Welcome, PJ. Um, I have a question for you, Hope Faith, and that is you, you're looking for those half double crochet patterns. Is it, um, do you want them just strictly, that's the only stitch in, in the project? Or can it be like, I used that half double crochet to make a bubble, or I used that half double crochet to make a post stitch, uh, use that half double crochet to make like a fillet stitch. Um, kind of play with maybe a half double crochet, single crochet combo? Uh, or do you want it to just be strictly um, just half double crochets? Because I can I can do both and just I can also have fun and play with the half double crochet front front loop only, back loop only, you know, there's stuff I can do. I am someone that I really like texture in my projects. I like to um, have a lot of dimension in my patterns. I like to have a feel. Hello, Mel. Welcome. Welcome. Oh, welcome to the Crafters Gathering, Mel. I can't wait for you to join us tomorrow. You're going to love it. <laughs> welcome. Um, so yeah, let me know, Hope Faith, when you're referring to working with the half double crochet stitches with, with these projects. All right. Like, what? Uh, just just half double crochets or can I mess with them? Can I can I be creative with them? All right. Welcome everybody to the uh, the chat in here. If you get a comment from Hannah, Hannah is my moderator and she is amazing. So if you get some kind of message from Hannah, she is either going to help direct you, answer your question, or she sends your question directly to me, where I already have a couple ready to go and I can get to your question faster. Okay, Becky is my next question. Hey, Tiffany, I mailed you a letter about two weeks ago. It's from Caroline. I'm on 
my mom, oh, did you get it yet? Yes. Yes, I did. So I, I actually have a question for you guys about happy meal. I don't get a lot of happy meal. It's very rare that I get happy meal, but that's okay. I'm not going to be someone that's like, please, please, please send me happy meal. No, if you want to, I would, I love, I love your happy meal. But if, um, if that's not your thing, then I'm not going to push it, push it at all. But I got your letter. In fact, oh, I was going to share this with you guys on something else, but I'll share it with you now. I'm going to go this way over here. So whenever I get a letter or a really nice email or something that says something uplifting and really sweet to me that motivates me and encourages me to keep going, especially when this, this, this job, because being a YouTube content creator, it's amazing and it's fun and I love it so much, but sometimes it can be a lot and sometimes it can be overwhelming and your words of encouragement, they, they keep me going sometimes. So I literally put them on here <laughs> on the, on this wall. And I have like letters and emails and not all of them are there. I still have a couple more, but I hang them up and, and I keep, I keep them like that. And, um, so I don't necessarily come on to my, I could do it. So I have another account here on YouTube. It's called Tiffany behind the scenes. I, um, just, I just started it. If you want to check it out, that's fine. I do a lot of parent pickup line videos. Uh, when I get a chance, things are just really weird right now. And I haven't had an opportunity or an open window to make them recently. Um, and school's about to be out. So I'm going to have to change that up anyway. But um, vlog style stuff is over there. And what do you guys think? Do you do you like to see me open um, happy mail? Or do you want me to share my my happy mail? Uh, what what do you enjoy? What do you like? Now, I'm not going to keep it here on this on my main channel, because I try to keep my main channel on um, the, the tutorials, the education information, right? Uh, either tutorials or learning something about crochet. But if you, do you want me to do happy mail, like reveals? Is that something you like? Do you want me to do that? Because I'd be more than happy to. I'm just also a private person and I'm like, I keep it all to myself. <laughs> so let me know and I will get back to the feed here afterwards. I, I don't want to, um, bog you guys down with just reading. But thank you for asking. All right, Hope Faith. Can the hats, beanies be done in half double crochet stitches? Oh, yes. Oh, Hope Faith, you're going to love this. Oh, you're going to love it. You got you got to watch this Friday's tutorial and see what I do. And you're going you're gonna to be like, whoa. And then again, if, if um, I show, if Friday's tutorial doesn't get across exactly what I'm hoping to portray. Um, I'll I'll put put it on the list to do a tutorial on just how to how to do it. PJ, thank you so much. Mwah! I appreciate you. I haven't given you a super chat in a while, so here it is. <laughs> You're amazing. <laughs> So yes, I think I think you're gonna love this, Hope Faith. Now, what I want you to do, Hope Faith. I don't know if you want me to call you Hope or Faith or Hope Faith, but um, what I want you to do is I want you to watch this Friday's tutorial. See if the new process on how I show you how to do a beanie, if if that, um, if that worked for you, if it showed you what to do, or if it wasn't quite clear enough and you need a little bit more. Uh, so when on our next, next week, next Tuesday, come hop back on here, meet up with us and just kind of let me know, like, Oh, that was exactly what I needed. I know exactly what to do to make whatever beanie using the half double crochet stitch. Or if you're like, I still need a little bit more. Okay. So do that for me. All right. Terry, Terry. First time ever did a baby blanket in cotton. 
Does cotton stretch? It can. Uh, I love working with cotton though, because especially in the summer, it's breathable. It, it, it is a little heavy. It does stretch, but it's also breathable and it's not necessarily hot. Now it can make you warm, but I also like that you it's really easy to wash, really easy to wash. So um, that's one one really convenient thing about making a baby blanket with 100% cotton yarn um, is you don't have to worry about, oh my gosh, will it fall apart? Will it be destroyed? I'm too afraid to wash it. No, it's just 100% cotton. You just wash it on a gentle, sty gentle cycle and then let it either tumble dry low a drier gentle cycle or just lay it flat to dry. So super easy to maintain, keep up. Um, I have like my um, lost or no, my um, rainbow baby blanket was 100% cotton. And if you've seen my Instagram, if you've been on my Instagram and you've seen that really colorful project that I'm working on right now, that is made with 100% cotton. It's going to be a baby blanket that is a work in progress. And we'll be coming hopefully this. I'm so excited. It's really, really colorful. And that's made with 100% cotton. Welcome, everybody. I'm happy you were able to make it to my Tuesday live tonight. Thank you so much for being here. If you are on the channel, make sure you're using your emojis. Go crazy with them. I love just seeing them. They're so much fun. All right, Kim, would you consider doing a crochet along? I thought about it. I'm worried about it though. Um, some people love them. Other people, if you, if you're not into the project, then people stop watching your videos for a while and then you fall off of their suggested feed. Um, so I've thought about it. I've actually talked about it with the, uh, the people in the crafters gathering. I don't know if it's quite my style. Um, it have to be the right project. You know what I mean? Um, I, I, I'll think about it. I'll write that down and I'll put that in the, I need to think about you. How would I do it right? How would I do it? My style, you know? Let's write that down, so crochet along. Speaking of, have you guys, uh, have you guys already entered into my mystery box giveaway number 13 yet? Did you even know that it started? I posted a live this morning, so go check it out if you haven't yet. Get entered into that. Mystery box giveaway number 13 is live right now. It's live this week, uh, and I announced the winner this Saturday, 1 p.m. Central Standard Time, Texas time. The way I always do it, you know, do a live, use that random comment picker. Love it. I can't wait to show you what I put in the box. It's so, so good. So good. Uh, Davida, the old, Davida Old Crow. Interesting. I have a question. I bought some sugar and cream cotton yarn and it's harder than this. The, than the, it's super hard. What can I do about it, about that? And it's okay. So yes, the Lily Sugar and Cream yarn, it is it has like a thick kind of coarseness to it because it is 100% cotton yarn and it's a size four weight yarn. So it's a thicker 100% cotton yarn. So yeah, I, I totally know what you're talking about. Um, that's why it works so fantastic for washcloths and tote bags and uh, anything you want sturdy, like a basket or um, the, the, you know, those plastic bag holders, or there's so many things that 100% cotton yarn, Lily Sugar and Cream is great for, projects that are perfect for it. Uh, if you're looking for a 100% cotton yarn to make baby clothes with or baby blankets, I recommend going um, to a size three weight. Uh, that seems to be more moldable little bit easier to use with some projects depending on what you're trying to accomplish what you're trying to make um so 
if you bought that yarn and you're just kind of stuck, you don't quite know what to make with it, um, check out some of my playlists. I believe I made a playlist for 100% uh, or one yeah, cotton yarn what projects that I have that are made with cotton yarn um, and see if you like anything. And then maybe if you had another project in mind, but this yarn isn't working for it, um, it opens up your ability to find something else for, for that project. Tracy, hello. I want to do a blanket for my preteen granddaughter. She likes the Red Heart Unforgettable. Oh, yes, it's very, very pretty. Uh, in stained glass color, but she wants more textures. What would be a good stitch or tutorial? Okay, when it comes to textured stitches, uh, post post stitches create a lot of texture. Bobble, uh, bobble stitches create clusters or, or texture. Um, Help me out in the chat. If you have any ideas for, for Tracy and her blanket, she wants to make some textures. What do you suggest? Um, clusters are a lot of fun. Um, the alternate stitch, which is uh, a bigger stitch next to a smaller stitch in the same stitch space, and then skip a stitch, big stitch, small stitch, same stitch space skip a stitch. It, I do this stitch in the, uh, what's that baby blanket name? Oh my gosh. What's that baby blanket name? I'm going on my channel real quick. One of my first baby blankets playlists. Let's find blankets. Uh, okay, the um, that one. <laughs> uh, it's called it says here easy baby blanket for absolute beginner. Oh, no. And then The Essentials Baby Blanket. Okay, Sleepy Baby. That's it. The Essentials Baby Blanket, Sleepy Baby. Thank you guys in the chat for helping me out. Perfect. Now, Lisa, would shells be, aren't they more flat? I, I feel like shells are more flat. Moss stitch is good. But yeah, you guys have, you guys, we got, we got you covered there. We got you covered, Tracy. You got some great ideas. All right, Jody. Hey girl. Okay. How do I know how long I've been in the crafters gathering? I feel like it's been a long time. Huh? So Joe, I've been here since I started my, my membership program. Oh. oh boy. I'll let you know tomorrow. <laughs> I'll let you know how long you've been in here tomorrow. Um, Jody, it should say under, and uh, you're right, uh, Michelle, thank you so much. Jody, it should say under your membership tab. So you can check there, but I'll, I'll try to come prepared for you tomorrow. All right, life in Janie's world. Life in Janie's world. What skill level is the Friday's beanie tutorial? Absolute beginner. Um, really, it's going to be, I say absolute beginner because of the soft bobble stitch. It's um, where you take multiple basic stitches and put them together. And then the what there's one row, the very last row here is post stitches. And under definition, post stitches fall under intermediate level. But I think, I don't think that's, I think, some of you advanced beginners have got it okay. And how I show it in my tutorial, I, I try to be very explanatory, descriptive, or show it really well for you if you've never played with a post stitch. But that's that's why it's classified the advanced beginner. An absolute beginner, you can um, slow my video way down if you if you if I'm moving too fast for you in this project. 
uh, by hitting the settings for the little gear and your screen, hitting playback speed and slowing me down. So that way I can be slow enough to meet your needs. However, um, an absolute beginner is still practicing your basic stitches. Um, they, they stay right in that realm. That's their comfort zone, still practicing those and haven't quite gotten to putting those stitches together to form something like a cluster. So that's why I say advanced beginner, I think will be perfect. I want to do a video, actually, I want to do a fun video where I not not like a Friday video, but like one that I slip in the middle of a week where I kind of share with you the different levels of the different crochet levels that you could identify as and what um, what they what they entail to be that level. So you can know, oh, I'm definitely this level or, oh, I'm more that level. Um, some people I know, they are intermediate. They could totally be in that whole intermediate realm, but they really like to stay in the advanced beginner project space. Like th that's their happy spot, you know? So there, there can be that as well where, yeah, you have the skill, but you prefer to be over here and that's totally fine. You don't have to try you don't have to achieve a higher level to it's not a video game you know where you're like that's your goal is to achieve this highest level it's it's really just wherever you are happiest the projects that make you feel the most fulfilled and happy so all right that that's all the questions that i have there let me actually because i had some on instagram Somebody mentioned on my Instagram, they mentioned a workshop and I don't have a workshop in mind. I want to do a meet and greet. And here's my thoughts. I want to do, I want to start small. It's probably something local, test the waters, see, see how many people are interested in coming. Um, thinking about doing something at a local yarn shop, maybe. Um, and kind of throwing it out there, uh, asking people to kind of sign up so I know how many people will be there, but it'd be free. You know, it's not something I would charge for, but it would just like sign up for it so I know how many people to anticipate. Um, and then I, I've kind of dabbled in thoughts like talking, like having this whole gathering where we talk, we can crochet together and just just hang out, you know, and I think that'd be really cool to do that in person. Um, that would just be very, very special for me. I mean, that would be really special for me just to meet you guys. Um, so that is something I am playing with in my head right now. I still have to um, make uh, follow the steps to actually making it happen. And I want to be able to provide you guys enough time to um, arrange things in your schedule if you want to show up. So that is something I definitely want to put my toe in the waters and, and test that out and see how that goes. Um, oh, and then on my Instagram, I don't have the project up here. It's still in my living room. <laughs> I still have this project in my living room because I'm still working on it. But this project right here, I took a picture of and since put it up, posted it on Instagram. That is a work in progress. That is that super comfortable or comfortable. Yes, it is super comfortable, but the super colorful baby blanket made with 100% cotton that I was talking about. And I'm, I feel like I'm going to give it like a popsicle name because <laughs> when I look at it, it makes me think of a popsicle. <laughs> so that is coming. It'll probably be more towards um, the, in, in the summer when all those colors are super poppy and awesome and fun, playful. And then oh, here it is. And then I did get some questions on my my Instagram post where I asked if you had any questions to feel free to input those questions. And one is what crochet project should I make next after finishing my mosaic blanket? That is completely up to you. Now, what I would suggest, 
A mosaic blanket can be very detailed. It can be a lot. And I really hope you enjoyed the project because they look really neat. But that was probably a really big project. What I like to do is I like to kind of like do a big project and then follow it up with a, a quick win, a, a little project, something I can make up really fast and get that. Yes, okay, that felt really good. Done, finished and then move on to maybe a medium or larger size project. I have to break break up my projects a little bit instead of having big project, big project, big project. When I do that, I start to feel burnt out. And it can be it can just be a lot, you know, especially if this project you're working on takes and then you start to feel that project fatigue where it's not bringing you the joy it used to bring you. That um We've talked about that a little bit in the crafters gathering, some some of the individuals in the crafters gathering, getting some projects that they were super excited about, but then um, they were so much the same, just repetitive, just big, big projects that they started to feel that burnout feeling. Okay, um, next question. What is your favorite brand of yarn to work with when crocheting? And I don't necessarily have a favorite uh, li well, lion brand. I really, really like Sharon. Welcome to the crafters gathering. Woo! Yes. Welcome Sharon. I'm so excited for you to join us tomorrow. Remember crafters gatherings are Wednesday at 7 PM central standard time, Texas time and Saturday at 11 AM central standard time. Uh, if you can't make those, I do record the meetings and put the playbacks or the, the replay in the community tab of my YouTube channel that only members can see. That way, if you wanted to make it, but you couldn't make it, you can still feel like you were part of it. So welcome guys. I'm so excited to have you be a part of the Crafters Gathering. Uh, yeah, when it comes to favorite brands, I don't really have one. I love to, I love to play with them all. I, there's so many great brands out there. There's so many fun colors and different brands do different things and have different specialties or feel different. And so I like to play with that a lot. I also really like um, uh, a yarn that I'm really enjoying is uh, Yarn Bee Sugar Wheel, the 100% cotton, their color combinations are just stunning. I almost want to say that the colors they use in their variegated yarn, their cakes are um, probably my favorite color combinations. Um, why do you like the streamline crochet hooks rather than other kinds of crochet hooks? I mean, I think the crochet hooks I like are the very, very basic boy. The very, very basic boy. These ones. Uh, they have, oh gosh, the standard throat. They have just it's not in line. It's just standard, long, thin. It's just what I started on. And I like to, um, I started making a lot of stuffed animals and to make those, I needed tight stitches. And I was just able to get everything I needed from these hooks and they meet my needs. Now I do know quite a few people that, um, they need that larger base to hold it, to feel more comfortable, that ergonomic bottom and that's totally fine everybody's different um i've tried using furls i bought a furls here's my furls i love wood i love natural natural earthy things um materials but i crochet with the pin the pin hold not the knife hold and the pin hold um i i pinch and I find myself scooting closer to the end and then the big part here just kind of gets in my way. Though if I were a knife holder, I could see how that would be much easier to grab and be more comfortable to hold as a knife holder. So there's a couple different things. Maybe it's just the way that I hold my crochet hook or just what I'm just used to using. So, and there's so many different kinds out there. So it's just a matter of playing with them and finding what's the most comfortable for you. All right. Yay, I have another question. Another two questions here from the chat. Okay, got Missy. I'm wanting to make a blanket from Hobie. 
I have a hard time reading patterns. I would love some help because I really want to make this blanket. I don't know how to get it to you to get your help. Um, there's a couple different ways. Uh, one, you could email me. Uh, two, you could join my Facebook group. I have a Facebook group called I'm Hooked for Hope. And they um, there you can share pictures. And not just me, but anyone in the group can aid you, help you. Uh, or you can join my crafters gathering and let all of us be able to see you, hear you, and walk through through it with you in the most personable way possible. Um, I, I get I get it. The, uh, different people create patterns very differently, and some are really easy to follow, and some take a lot of interpretation, and you have to have a lot of that foundation of, I know my stitches. I know where to place things. I know what it's supposed to look like. And because I know what it's supposed to look like, I'm gonna take this pattern and I'm gonna kind of just hodgepodge it and to the way I know it's supposed to be. And that definitely takes a more intermediate advanced level crocheter to do that because you have to have that, that baseline. You know, you have to have enough experience with crochet to know. Okay, I don't understand quite what they mean here, but looking at the picture, the image, I'm thinking this is probably what they want me to do. So hopefully those things will help you. Email, Facebook group, or join my crafters gathering. Jody, you have a question, lady? I feel like the rose on that little beanie would be awesome in a contrasting color as well yes it, i agree with you um i'm or like make it in the antique white or the little mouse yes so you could really see it absolutely i think that would be awesome to do that my thought process though was use the yarn that was available <laughs> So if you want to, you can make this flower whatever color that you want to make it. Go for it. What my whole intention was, was using every last scrap bit of yarn that was available to you. And in this case, it's all going to be the same color because that's just what is available. But yeah, feel free. Make it in whatever color that you want. If you want to make it in the antique white, you just have to have that yarn available to you, you know? So. But I agree. I think that um, contrast would make it easier to see for sure. Thanks for pointing that out. And last question here is from Terry. Terry. Okay, I got the Hobby Lobby sugar wheel. Seems like uh, it's stretching in the middle or did I good 36 wide blanket, maybe 24 inches high. Okay, so the 100% cotton Hobby Lobby Sugar Wheel yarn. I love it. Uh, that was the, the yarn that I was referring to is one of my favorites because their color combinations are among the best. Um, there is weight to 100% cotton because the yarn is so dense. I guess is a good word. Yeah, dense would probably be a good word. So the bigger you make the blanket, uh, the heavier it'll be. And yes, there will be some stretch to it but what's good to know is that you can wash it and it, it, it goes away it, it comes back together um also depending on how loose your stitches is that could be a, a contributing factor um maybe using a smaller crochet hook make your stitches a little bit tighter uh possibly if it's too drapey um but yeah and with it being 100 cotton um it, it'll bounce back it'll be okay. And also just how you lay it somewhere, just kind of don't pull it to spread it, kind of just clump it more together. So the stitches are more together because yeah, it's going to want to have that drapey appeal to it a little bit, but um, you could, you could fix that by tightening up your stitches a little, either making, using a smaller crochet hook or yeah, that, yeah smaller crochet hook or if you know that you're you crochet loosely maybe try to tighten up your tension a little bit 
All right, that is all I have for today. You guys were awesome, incredible. I am so excited to have two more members to my crafters gathering. Tomorrow is gonna be awesome. If you had fun with me today, you just kind of dug this vibe. This was a really good time for you. Then that this is what we do in the crafters gathering. The only difference is I can see you and I can hear you and there's a group of people and it really feels like we're in the same room and it's a lot of fun. It, it, it really is a good time. Um, also check out my Instagram, that whole behind the scenes. I'm sharing the construction of my studio being built in my backyard right now, which I'm so excited about to finally be able to remove my work outside of the home. I'm kind of driving my husband a little bit crazy with yarn being all over the house right now. <laughs> He's like, when is the studio going to be built? Because I want my house back. <laughs> so I'm, I'm showing you that. So hop onto my Instagram so you can see the, the construction happen in real, in real time, kind of like as it, as I see it, you see it. Um, and just be able to hang out with me there. And um, yeah, check out my, mystery box giveaway number 13 also if you haven't entered in yet after this go dive over there and enter into mystery box giveaway number 13 all right guys you have a beautiful night thank you so much for joining me this evening being here with me hanging out i always love this this is so much fun i will see you friday with the tutorial on the lost in time baby beanie which i'm very excited about and i will also see you next tuesday for another Tuesday live. Have a beautiful week, guys. Mwah. Miss you already. Bye.